before I get into what I'm about to get into, I just want to make sure that each and every one of you guys hit that like or dislike button. Don't forget to put some Coach K for court pressure on that subscription button as well as that notification bell so you can be notified via email each and every time your boy E Thriller, aka Ham Rothstein, aka the Black Picasso, because I paint these pictures so vividly on the sport of boxing, uploads a video or goes live on my channel. And once again, welcome back. Now, today we are going to focus on Errol Spence yet again because I get so sick and tired of Errol Spence fanboys bringing up this bullshit ass narrative about, oh, well, Errol Spence's resume is way better than Terrence Bud Crawford's resume at 147 pounds. Errol Spence has been doing all of this heavy lifting while Terrence Crawford ain't fought nobody at 147 pounds. But mind you, they always want to ignore the facts. And so I'm just going to do my best to bring some proper context whenever it comes to this argument because it's bullshit. Now, let's focus on Terrence Bud Crawford first, right? Terrence Bud Crawford is a naturally a smaller guy than Earl Spence Jr. Terrence Bud Crawford moved up from 135 to 140 to 147, which is the weight class he's in, right? But along the way, it took Terrence Bud Crawford five years, y'all to move from 135 to 140. And then it took Terrence Bud Crawford another four years to become undisputed at 140 pounds, right? Before he moved up to 147 to face a Jeff Horn, the same guy that beat Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, right? To get that WBO strap. So it took Terrence Bud Crawford a total of nine years to move up two weight classes to become undisputed at 140 pounds. And then he went to 147 pounds to face Jeff Horn in his first fight for the WBO title. And he won that right off the bat. And since then, he's faced Jose Benavidez, Amir Khan, Kavalaskis, and Kill Brook. So the man has only had five fights. I repeat, five fights at the 147 pound division right and the man has a total of 37 wins zero losses in 28 ko's now shifting gears to earl spence now everybody want to continue to act like oh what well, earl spence is doing all of this heavy lifting right but let's not ignore the fact that for one earl spence has been in this same weight class for nine years and two his last two opponents were Keith Thurman's hand-me-downs, meaning Danny Backwoods Garcia, who has never, and I repeat, ever won a big fight at the 147-pound division. I mean, the biggest win on his resume at 147 was Robert Guerrero. I mean, please don't make me fart. Please don't make me fart. Because a lot of you guys love to give Danny Garcia all of this credit for going up against the best. But I can easily rebuttal this man ain't beat nobody who was the best at his respective weight class at 147. Now, 140, you got me. He was a hell of a champion at 140 pounds. But I digress on Danny Garcia. Moving along to Sean Porter. Sean Porter was a guy that nobody respected. Everybody said he couldn't box. Everybody said he was a football player. He's a dirty fighter. He headbutts. He does this and that in the third, right? Now, Sean Porter has a very impressive resume at 147 pounds. I will give you credit for that. But each and every time Sean Porter has stepped up in competition, he has did what? Lose. So I'm not going to give Earl Spence all of this credit for beating the guy who already had lost to Kell Brook and who also lost to Keith Thurman before he lost to Earl Spence. Now, shifting gears to Mikey Garcia. Little old Mikey Garcia, the same Mikey Garcia who was a champion at 135 pounds, right? He moved up two weight classes right off the bat to face an Earl Spence Jr. because he thought he saw something, but he got washed. I would give Earl credit for that, but let's not act like he was a legitimate 147 pounder, right? And then before this fight, it was Carlos Ocampo. I mean, I ain't even got to talk about that. And then Lamont Peterson, whose best days were at 140 as well. And then Kell Brook coming off of a eye surgery injury because he moved up not one but two weight classes to dare to be great to go up against triple g who broke his orbital bone and then earl spence broke his other orbital bone on the other side of his face right so everybody wants to sit up here and act like this man is doing all of this heavy fucking lifting but i'm just trying to figure out how how 
The man has been stuck at 147 pound division. His first bout was at 154, so he moved down, not up in weight. And all of a sudden, this man is just the second coming to Sugar Ray Leonard. I, I, I just don't understand it. I don't get it. So, of course, he is supposed to have a better resume at 147 pounds than Terrence Bud Crawford. The man has 27 fights with 26 fights at 147. So, it is what it is. So, can you guys please bring some proper context into this conversation whenever it comes to this? Because, hello, Terrence Bud Crawford has only had five fights at 147. Terrence Bud Crawford is with top rank. All of the other welterweights who are scared to fight him are on PBC, who quote unquote won't cross the other side of the street unless Bob Aaron breaks the bank and give them fucking lottery ticket numbers when they ain't never made that much money in their life. But once again, like, comment, share, and sub. Until next time, I'm gone.